Randy Rain here, and once again, love is in the air because I have another Bandai Love Bot. This one follows a little track. Let's check it out. This is Randy Robot Garage. That's right. This is another Love Bot, Love Boji Bot, whatever in the world that is. You should know it comes with a comic strip, and it's the same comic strip that comes in all these. But this one's interesting on the box. It has the other ones on here. So there's obviously a radio. There's the sensor, which is this one. Uh, there's the searcher, which is the other one I've done. Some wind-ups. A game, die-cast game. I don't know what that is. A radio-controlled version. And then the Love Talks one, the Interphone. I have that one. So it came out in 1984. So check out this uh, price sticker. It has Mickey on here. Is this... Was this sold under Disney at one time? I don't know. Guess so. 40 bucks in 1985. That's kind of expensive. So if you open it up, it's all complete. The instructions and both robots. And now the small robot doesn't do anything. It is just rolls and its arms move. You can move the head up and down, but the head comes off and the instruction says to keep your trinkets in. So that's what that's for, is to keep your trinkets in. Now this other robot, this is the one that goes around and follows the track. So on the bottom of this guy, you can see that it's yellowed. It's the only plastic that's yellowed. And I think it's yellowed from the heat. I may try to fix that. I don't know. I, I can't find any pictures of the bottom of this thing online. So I don't know if that's normal or not, but that's too close to the color that you see all the time. That has to be some sort of damage. It's obviously not UV damage, but it is heat damage. So what do you think? You think this thing works if I put some batteries in there? So let me show you. Yeah, so actually it works just fine, so it seems. Well, we're going to take it apart anyway, and let's just see how working it is, and how on the verge of breaking it is. Let's find out. Usually I say start at the bottom, but I'm thinking it's best to start on the back here. The last one of these love bots that I did it was straight out of the package, never ever been used, and it had broken gears in it, or one at least. So I'm actually kind of surprised how well this thing works. Wow, check it out. Bandai was no slouch. You know, they might not have had game like Tomy did, but they had the quality. Look at this ribbon here, down to these little sensors. I mean, look how that's changed colors, though. Is that supposed to be like that? That's so weird. So here's this interesting little gearbox here. We have two motors. Now, you would think that there would be some tin tooth gears on these things. And if they are, they would be split. But these could have little worm drive, little spirals. Maybe that's why it's working, because those tend to not dry out and crack as bad. Time to find out. Uh, yep. Worm drive. So that's why it works so well. 
See, the really the only one that would be cracked is this one, and it's okay. These being free. I mean, these do crack, but I'm not seeing anything on that one. But that spins this. This one spins this one. And this one spins this one that spins the tire. However, if you look really close, if you look, there is a crack starting. It's the same thing with this one, but not as bad. This one's really hard to see. But I don't have this one. I have a little tiny bit of this cream developer left. So I'm going to try this method. Let's see if this changes to white again. So that was out there most of the day. And it actually did something. I mean, compared to the other white. But it's still a little off. And underneath where I didn't get the sun, didn't get it. So I went ahead and bought some more. I bought this stuff. It's nighttime now, so I can't put it outside. But I just remembered that I made a UV panel. So let's try that. Pour a little bit of this stuff into the water. A little stir. Hopefully it still works. Uh, most of it still works. And there it is. I guess that's about as good as it's going to get. Comparatively. Yeah. Maybe a hint. I wish someone would figure out why it does that. And like, how did this, these three pieces do it? But nothing else did it. It's obviously not UV damage, because if it was UV damage, everything exposed to UV would be. This was like inside. This was never exposed. So bizarre. So there's a flat spot. It has to go in correctly. You know that one. I don't like the sound of that. There's that. So I was looking at these, and I looked them up. These two guys right here, these are amplifying transistors. The rest of these, which are all the same, are power transistors. So my guess is what's happening is this amplifying, I guess that's just the signal that it's amplifying from here, from these. And there, since there's two and they're not connected together. So each one of these is inputting into the circuit. And I think that's what we're doing here now with these is that it's kind of a, just doing a logic type circuit. So my guess is, is that when this one detects black, it makes this motor turn off. 
So this becomes a pivot point. So this is black. It's now turning away from it. And then as soon as it detects the light again, this one turns on. So this one works this motor, and this one works this motor. Now why there's two, I guess, I don't know, just my, just my guessing of why there's two would be, I don't know, that maybe both of them, geez, I don't know, maybe, maybe there is a speed thing. Let's play with it. Okay, here's something interesting that, look how, look at this. That's pretty interesting that technically they're, the outer ones are almost off. I wonder what happens if I just do this. If I just turn it on, they both go. If I do this, oh, I get one to stop. Both of them on. That one stops. There it is. Listen. Well, that's pretty interesting. My guess is these are just photoresistors and the light's shining down on them. And if the light hits this white, it bounces back up, turns these on. And when these are on, it's turning the motors on. And then when the hits this darker color, it doesn't get reflected back into here. So these get turned off. So when one gets turned off, it turns the opposite motor off. I still don't really understand why there's two sensors and why all this. Why couldn't you just do one sensor? I'm not can't figure out what it's doing. Oh, look at that. We got a crack right here. Oh, well, that ain't good. Oh, look at that. That just barely even touched it and it broke. Wow. I wonder if the damage made it brittle or the retro writing made it brittle. And something else broke here. A screw post. Where'd that come off of? Right here. Look at that. All these screw posts broke. Whoa, it's just crumbling. Oh, man. I think this other one I'm just going to fill in. I don't know where the pieces went to this one. Okay, maybe that's better. Sure don't want to over tighten this. I can hear it crumbling in there. Guess I better get this back together before this whole thing falls apart. Put the head on.
So there it is, the Love Bow G Bot Sensor Bot from Bandai, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it works. It's always worked. But there are those gears starting to split. But I've been at those worm drive gears, even after they split, they really don't split that much to make it stop working. Some do. And they will eventually, but it takes them a little bit longer than like the little small gears. I don't have any right now. All I have is the small ones. So I've got some in order and I will replace them, but it works. So I'm calling it good. But what I'd really like is a chemist to tell us what is going on with this plastic stuff. Why does it change? I, I've seen some theories and whatnot, but you know, there's no confirmed proof or anything. And I'd like to know, does the retro bright make it brittle or was it already brittle? That's a good question. Now, I still really haven't figured out why there's so many sensors on here. My best guess is, is that it's just a logic thing so that it will work on this, but you can also put it down anywhere else and it'll work. You put it on the ground, it'll work. You put it on a solid black thing, it still works. So that's my guess is that it just makes it so it will work on something like this and also work as just a toy around. So I've laid it all out. Let's see it in action. I've been putting it on the black spot here and seeing what happens when it goes into the black part or into the white part, I guess. So eh, it kind of works and corrects itself. Sometimes it doesn't. So that's kind of why I think there's those more sensors in there. But let's see. Up this way. So actually, it's a pretty neat little robot, and back in 1984, this would have been really fun. And so it's a pretty good little robot. And you got to admit, those Japanese, they used to know how to make some toy robots. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate a like. If you want to see more, of course, you hit the subscribe. And I want to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. I couldn't do this stuff without them, so I thank them all so very much. If you want to become a patron, there are some perks. There's a link below. You can check it out. If you want to just do a PayPal donation to help me keep this going, then I would appreciate that as well. But otherwise, just keep watching my videos, because I thank you very much for doing that. That was... Randy Robot Garage!